Hey everyone, back again. Today I'm going to try and explain what biopolitics is according to Michel Foucault. Now before jumping into that, you can follow me on Instagram at theory underscore and underscore philosophy if you want to mostly see pictures of my cats. Uh, if you want to help me out, you can like, share, subscribe. If you want to help me out monetarily, you can do that with the links below. Obviously no pressure. If you're listening to this in podcast form, you can find the video on YouTube. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, you should be able to find the podcast form pretty easily uh, wherever you get podcasts. And there shouldn't be ads, at least for now. Who knows? Maybe things will change. Um, but yeah, so that's more or less it. Let's jump into what biopolitics is. So in Foucault's work, he talks about many institutions. He talks about hospitals, he talks about prisons, government, clinics, all of these institutions that permeate our daily lives. And in many ways, these institutions have pretty significant effects on how we live in the world. And he treats them as microcosms of broader systemic phenomena like control. So in the case of the prison, he uses the panopticon to describe the ways in which people are surveyed and how surveillance operates to such an extent that people watch themselves. And if you want more on that, I've done um, a couple episodes on discipline and punish and one on just the panopticon if you, if you want more on that. So Foucault is trying to think of how these mechanisms kind of unfold in a medical establishment. So the Panopticon applies in many of the same ways. Like there is a kind of surveillance mechanism within hospitals. I mean, you're under the uh, view of a doctor or nurse or whatever that maintains your well-being in a kind of strict control-like way. So that's one way to look at it. And I'm not passing a, a, a judgment on that, but I think that that's one way we can describe the Panopticon working in a medical field. But Foucault also wants to think of how an exertion of power over bodies exemplifies a different kind of power than the one that we find with like the panopticon. So he calls this biopower, which roughly translates to power over life, bio, bio relating to bios and just referring to life more generally. So what does that what does that mean? Biopower. What does it mean to exert power over life? Well, in tracing the development of biopolitics and biopower, he says that it follows anatomo politics or anatomo power, and this is really chronicled well in um, I guess the birth of the clinic, which I've also done on here, so you can listen to that if you want, where he describes the way that anatomy began to take on a kind of interesting place within the medical field. So it wasn't about like mystical explanations for various uh, bodily ailments. Suddenly people, that is doctors, began to cut open bodies and look to see how things worked. And that developed a, or began to develop a new regimen of truth as to what health looked like. Now he says that biopower follows this because biopower is the extension of a kind of logic of bodies, a knowledge of bodies and how they operate in consolidating a norm about those bodies. So whereas previously, if someone had an ailment, they were a kind of singular being that would be you know, evaluated in terms of their uh, a problem they had. And we still see that continue today in terms of their anatomy, of course, like this is what doctors do. But the extension of that logic into the broader social sphere meant that people were judged not only in terms of their anatomy, but in terms of their deviation from a norm about health. Now, where does this norm come from? Well, quite simply from repetition, from the acknowledgement of certain forms of proper bodies and how they relate to uh, proper size, height, uh, you know, weight, race, um, propensity to give birth, life expectancy, all of these things began to develop a sort of norm. And it's in this way that we can imagine the transition from anatomopolitics to biopolitics. Now I should say that Foucault discusses this probably the most succinctly within his lectures. But interestingly, if you read the lectures, he 
often defers discussing biopolitics, choosing instead, not necessarily intentionally, but choosing instead to discuss the kind of governmental changes that allowed the formation of biopolitics and the exertion of biopower. And he credits this with the emergence of liberalism. Now, what do I mean by liberalism? Well, just very um, basically, liberalism refers to a kind of governmental regime that tries to minimize government while maximizing productivity or control over bodies. So the logic that we often hear today, especially those coming out of certain conservative circles, is about reducing government size because there is a belief that people, the market, will just regulate themselves and there is no need for a kind of oversight. Now Foucault says that this is a very interesting phenomenon in the course of human history because for a long time, you know, living under sovereignty, it was a matter of um, being told what to do all the time or just being under control. So the shift for him didn't necessarily mark a lessening of control, even though that's the narrative it sells. It tries to tell you that it means less control and it means more freedom. He says that it actually marks the perfection of control. Now this relates to the idea of the panopticon where you don't even need to be under surveillance to act properly. You just kind of accept the way you should act because of various uh, power mechanisms that shape you and control you without you necessarily knowing it. So he relates or kind of attributes the emergence of biopolitics to liberalism because in the logic of less control, there emerged as well a concomitant belief that the kinds of social interactions, the kind of social, uh, the kind of bodily reactions to this that we would see would be more natural because they weren't being determined by a despot or a ruler of some kind or government. And it is through that that this norm began to emerge because it was associated with a kind of truthfulness, with a kind of reality that was free of coercion, free of control. And this allowed then the establishment of this form of control, not only over people's individual bodies by saying, hey, you know, you have this thing wrong with you uh, because of this problem in your body. What we began to see then was a homogenization of control over all bodies because of their relationship to this, albeit artificial, norm. And all norms are really artificial, but in this case, a kind of norm about life and what you know certain bodies should look like. Now, it's important to know that this doesn't mean that death has left the equation. And we can contrast this with an idea of necropolitics with the work of uh, Shin Membe, who uh, I hope to talk about at some point here. But for now, it's important to note that biopolitics is not, or the, the form of government that uses biopower has not completely issued death. It still lets people die, but it justifies those deaths with a new logic. So for example, um, in, in relation to like fat phobia or fat shaming, when bodies that do not comply with a general standard about what bodies should look like in terms of their height, width, weight, you know, these kind of arbitrary uh, signifiers of health, when bodies do not comply with that, and let's say someone who didn't belong to that or someone who was quote unquote deviant from the norm were to die, they would be, um, their death would be attributed to their deviation from the norm. So what we see then is not an, a looking upon someone's body as being you know, their own body, but them always being determined even in death in relation to a norm. And Foucault uses the same logic to consider the uh, emergence of state racism, where under biopolitics, with this emergence of a norm, there could then be the consolidation of an idea of racial purity, which is often associated with a state, especially if we consider the, you know, the way that that is being echoed today in various, in various nations, and certainly uh, the best example would be like with Nazi Germany, 
where we saw the establishment or the attempt to establish um, not only this tacit norm, but to put that into legislation, which essentially meant that people who did not fall into that, that norm, did not fall into that racial norm, would then be either directly punished, and it wouldn't be seen as violence like as, as it had historically manifested, it would take on a new justification. It would be kind of validated in the eyes of the public because they were sold this idea, not directly, but uh, unconsciously sold an idea that people who deviated from this norm are somehow deserving of whatever befell them. So this also extends to just um, excluding certain people from the medical establishment. Now this isn't to say that uh, racialized bodies who are excluded from the medical establishment or who are, who are just, they aren't heard when they are actually entered into the medical establishment. This isn't to say that we should extend this medical establishment to everyone per se, because this medical est establishment is at its core extremely exclusionary. And any attempt to try and increase its, gr its scope will always mean that there is some population that is going to be either directly excluded or further pathologized because they do not abide by the norm that this medical establishment implies or that it uh, revitalizes over and over and over again. And that more or less covers it. If you want more on that, uh, the kind of key texts in his lectures are The Birth of Biopolitics, Security, Territory, and Population. Um, and then in his other books, you have, of course, The Birth of the Clinic, The History of Sexuality is probably the book in which he, he really develops this. Um, and then, of course, he, all of his other books kind of relate in, in some way or other. But yeah, I hope you liked what I had to say. Uh, if I did anything wrong or I said anything wrong or I mischaracterized Foucault in any way, I would love to hear about it. Um, but yeah, catch you next time.